So if you have taken a break from quilting this summer and now you're ready to dive back in, but don't really want to start with a super complicated project, then this is definitely the project for you. Today's tutorial is all about simplicity. So stick around and I'm going to show you how you can turn 18 fat quarters or quarter yards into a fabulous, simple lap quilt. Hello, I'm Stacy of Stacy Creates Stuff. Welcome back if you are a returning viewer and welcome if you are new to my channel. I'm all about fiber arts, especially quilting, embroidery, cross stitch. And yes, now that fall is almost here, perhaps there'll be some knitting. Anyway, today's tutorial is a quilt tutorial and I'm going to take 18 quarter yards of different fabrics they're all from the same line. They're all a blender of fabric that um, I just loved. And I decided I was going to make something that was super simple, didn't take a lot of brain power, and could be done easily in a weekend. So the first step is to pick six fabrics. Yep, any six. If you are using prints of any kind, and you could with this pattern, then you will want to pick something that is going to look good in a six inch finished block. You're just going to take six fabrics, cut a six and a half inch strip from each, and then cut those into six and a half inch squares. You should be able to get six squares out of a strip. Next, you're going to take the remaining 12 fabrics and you are going to cut four two inch strips off of each of those. These measurements have been assuming that you are using long quarters. If you are using fat quarters, it is a fat quarter friendly project. Then you will need to, for your six and a half inch squares, cut two six and a half inch strips. For the two inch strips, you would, instead of cutting four of them, you would cut eight. You are going to take four different strips and sew them together. That resulting new strip, we'll call it the stripe unit. The stripe unit should be six and a half inches wide, and you are going to trim down that six and a half inch wide unit into six and a half inch squares, you know, to go with those solid six and a half inch squares. So you're going to cut that. In the end, you should have a whole bunch. Okay, you want to know an exact number? Here it is. All right, now that you have all of these six and a half inch units, some are just a single fabric as a square. The others are those striped units made up of four different fabrics. By the way, when I was pairing up or quadrupling up my strips, I tried to make all 12 of mine different. So I'd have 12 different sets of stripe units. You could go even further if you were using the fat quarters and you had multiple more strips to choose from. You can mix them up even further. That's kind of the fun part. It just kind of goes. However, now that you have all of your pieces, it's time to lay them out. And I did a stripe set horizontal, a stripe set vertical, and then a solid square. Now I use the term solid. It wasn't necessarily a solid fabric, but it was an unpieced unit. It was just a square of fabric. And then I repeated that horizontal, vertical, solid, all the way across. Does it really matter that you start with the vertical? No, you could start with a horizontal and then go vertical and then square. Whatever, whatever three that you pick sequence, you just keep repeating that. I found that it was easiest to use a design wall. You could lay it out on a bed, but you want to be able to lay it out to make sure that your color distribution is even throughout the quilt or at least into a pleasing scenario that you like. Now, some of the fabrics that I used in my quilt were fairly close together in uh, hue, and it was okay. I just made sure that I wasn't taking a bright green and putting another bright green, even though it was a different hue, uh, right next to it. it. 
could have been this way, but I just kind of try to distribute them throughout that way. The great thing is, is that the six fabrics that you used to cut those solid unit squares don't appear in any of the stripes. So you don't have to worry about the exact fabric butting up against each other that way. Now, once you have all of your blocks laid out, it's time to sew it together. I personally found that it was easier for me to keep everything straight if I sewed them in units. And I think I did this by going three, essentially making a nine patch, going three units across, three units down. So I'd sew three together, the next three together, the next three together, sew that as a unit. Pop that back up on the wall. Go on to the next one and kept doing that. And then I could sew my units together in big rows, and then all my big rows together, and voila, I had a quilt. I think my explanation for this quilt is more complicated than making the quilt itself. Now, if you like the lovely fall colors that I chose for my quilt, good news! There is a kit available, of course, from my favorite quilt shop, Vintage Pink and Green. Link is in the description below. Other good news, if you just want the pattern, all you need to do is sign up for my quilting email list and if I will send it right out to you. If you're already on the quilt list, well, check your inbox because I emailed that out earlier today. Thank you all for watching and I'm going to be bringing you some more quilt tutorials very, very soon. Until then, my friends, have a quilty day. Bye.